My name is Joe Scully. I'm a trainee biomedical scientist. So normally uh, our routine samples for haematology, they're loaded onto the front of the analyzer, but the small ones, they, they can't be put on the automated track, so they have to be done manually. Sometimes we have manual blood films we need to make. Similar to the baby sample, any, any abnormally sized samples can't be put on the track automated, so uh, a manual blood film will have to be made. So I took the big sample and I inverted it a few times. I have my two films prepared. I used a pipette to get a small drop of blood on the film or on the slide. And with the other slide, I brought it back across the slide just to touch the blood. And as soon as I could see a line of blood go across the whole edge, I pushed it forwards in one motion. Once I finished that, I just checked it under a light and you can see sort of different colors refract for sort of the monolayer of red cells, which is what is needed for analysis. Once I made the slide, I went to the stainer. Um, most slides are automatically made and stained at the same time. But if you manually make a film, you have to load the slide onto the stainer. When the slides are finished, they come out and they normally go in the gray racks and they'll go into the digital microscope. However, um, this one it came out and went into the blue rack, which means it's completely done and stained. And then we take that over to the biomedical scientist to have a look at under the microscope. This test I performed is called an IM screen, and it's a screen for glandular fever. So what I did, so I took the, took the cartridge and I scanned the, the number of it into the analyzer. Um, I also scanned the operator ID, which is just general for everyone. And then I also scanned the patient samples ID. Um, I wrote down the lab number on the cassette and I pipetted 10 microliters of patient plasma onto the well, followed by three drops of the solution that's required for the test. I then loaded it into the analyzer for incubation and in eight minutes time, we'll get a result, whether it's positive or negative. So some samples, they require some specialist tests in uh, hemostasis, and we need to use a method called double spinning, and this creates platelet-poor plasma. So what we do is we spin the sample initially, and then we take off most of the plasma, leaving around 15, 10, 15% of it behind. So we take the, the first aliquot into a small tube, and then we spin that for 10 minutes in the big centrifuge. And then once that's spun, we then do the same thing. We, we take most of the plasma out of the, the aliquot that's just spun and put it into a new small tube. And this ensures there are no platelets in the plasma. And once that's done, we store it in the freezer at minus 70. Our routine samples, when we get them, we take them from the main reception and we put them on to spin for two minutes at 6,000 RPM. Um, once they're done, each sample I take out and I just check that the sample is filled enough and whether the plasma is hemolyzed. So it's sort of a measure of how red the plasma is. It's important to check the level because in coagulation you need a nine to one ratio of the sodium citrate and the blood in the tube so there's a small frosted line and i check every sample to make sure it's on the line as well as making sure the the plasma isn't too red um i load it into the rack i make sure the barcode's facing out so the analyzer can read it and then i take the rack over to the analyzer i i load it on and then tests will complete automatically